deconstructing the past to help you make sense of today. Time for another award-winning episode of Pre-Nicene Perspective with your host, Darren Kalama. As most churches in Western countries have devolved into neoliberal freak shows by alienating core Christian dogma and doctrine, the flock has taken notice. But instead of leaving Christianity, they're making a bold move back to their roots and reconnecting with pre-Nicene Christianity and the first Bible of 144 AD. In today's episode, we find out why, and we also unveil a special message for disgraced pastors and preachers. In our last episode, we demonstrated how the Damnatio Memoriae Edict was used by Roman emperors and Judeo-Christians to erase and replace the first Christian Bible of 144 AD and ban denominations that competed with the Roman Catholic Church following the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD. I recommend you watch it first and get up to speed before continuing on here because I'm not going to go over the same ground again quite that deeply. Uh, We're going to have a link in the show notes uh, for that episode, or you can just go to firstbiblenetwork.com and click on the Episodes tab. For many people, that episode was a real eye-opener, even for the staff here at FBN, because we found out that Bishop Eusebius, who headed that Council of Nicaea just a couple months after being excommunicated at the Council of Antioch, Now, try finding that story anywhere else. And it turned out to be just one of many fatal flaws with a council that transformed Christianity into Judeo-Christianity and turned the original canon into an issue of the National Enquirer with its stapled on barbaric Torah stories and rehashed Greek mythology fairy tales renamed, of course, to the Old Testament in the 3rd century. In any event, the episode seems to have awakened a long dormant uneasiness that people feel about the decidedly non-Christian barbaric culture and carnal Yahweh deity portrayed in that Torah Old Testament. For some stomach-churning examples, watch our Who's God series and you'll quickly have any doubts erased. But until recently, people really didn't see any other way out. You either go through the motions and pretend to believe the mass-murdering Yahweh is the same Christian God as revealed by Jesus Christ, or you simply leave the church. You become an atheist or agnostic and just wait on the sidelines until maybe something else makes a little more sense. And it's through that false choice theology buffet they were told they can have their eggs any way they want them as long as they're scrambled. You either get a big helping of Yahweh on the Jesus plate or you get nothing. And as a result, we've lost billions of Christians over the centuries and millennia because of this false choice theology. Well, until now. People finally have easy access to that first Bible of 144 AD with its single gospel and ten books, and it's sparking a revival of people hungry to reconnect with pre-Nicene Christianity and the original doctrine, dogma, canon, and liturgical rites and sacraments. And now they can. The heavy lifting has been done. But there's a next step. And that's why the target audience for this episode is actually pastors, priests, ministers, and preachers. Take a good look at the state of Christian churches today in the Western world. No, look harder. The only thing left of its termite-ridden structure is a thin coat of paint covering the void underneath. The satanic subversion has been happening for a long time. Step by step, degree by degree, the frog is boiled. But now, the situation is coming to a head. Do you really think your flock, your parishioners, didn't notice the capitulation to the sodomite wave? You think they weren't aware as you knuckled under to the fake plague church closures and masking? You think they forgot all about the fact that many of you even recommended that they be injected with these RNA bioweapons? You thought they didn't care when the name Jesus was replaced wholesale with Yeshua and other names found nowhere in the New Testament, like Yahweh and Yehovah? Oh, they noticed all right, and that's why your churches are almost empty. The few that remain are just going through the motions as you put them to sleep every Sunday. You keep ignoring reality and telling them fairy tales about Yahweh the Hebrew war god. You keep doing that and you can go back to selling Time Life subscriptions over the phone because they'll be gone, almost as gone as the cash you took to knuckle under to the fake plague orders. Yeah, you went along with it. 
you took the PPP money and made sure you didn't make any waves that would get noticed and then lose your 501c3 status. In short, you sold out, plain and simple. But hey, maybe you were just following orders. But you know, not everybody did. There was a church that stood their ground and protected their parishioners with vax exemptions and stayed true to the faith. You see, that's called being a real church and a real shepherd. That's standing in the line of fire when money and lives are at stake. Which brings us back to our topic. Do you know what kind of church it was? Well, that's right. It was a pre-Nicene church that uses the first Bible, the pre-Nicene Bible of 144 AD. And because of the discernment gleaned from that Bible, they knew back in August of 2020 that it was time to ban the RNA injections and issue religious exemptions at no charge. And that's exactly what they did. That's what leaders do. Leaders that have a firm theological footing. And let's face it, you don't. If you did, I wouldn't be recording this episode for so many of you. And how many are you directly responsible for killing in your zeal to recommend the injections? Literally, only God knows. And he also knows about that fake vax card you used too, burning a hole in your wallet as you stood there in the pulpit and sent people to their death. We all know what happened, and I'm not going to spend the entire episode dwelling on it. And you know who else knows about it? The people that stopped going to your church. These are the same people that have been flooding back to the pre-Nicene churches, or they're desperately looking for one, especially here in the United States and Canada. Now, for those pastors that I refer to as kinos, Christians in name only, that have no intention of changing their ways, you can save yourself some time and turn off the program right now. Let someone deserving of the bandwidth use it. And for the few people remaining, I recommend the following course of action. Number one, repent and mean it. And meaning it means following up with concrete action. Number two, get a copy of the pre-Nicene Bible and familiarize yourself with it. I think it will strike a chord and you'll know that it's true immediately. All your government payoff money is probably gone by now and the donations have probably dried up. So I'm going to give you a link where you can get it for free and that's at theveryfirstbible.org.org. Number three, watch the Who's God series. It's just three videos and it's under an hour. I guarantee it will clear up any questions you have about the Hebrew war God and his complete alienation from Christ and our Christian God. You can see that also at prenicene.org. Just put a dash between the pre and Nicene. Now, after you've familiarized yourself with things, now is going to be the time to decide what course your church is going to follow. And time, as we both know, is short. You can either follow the same path you've been on and tumble off the cliff into the spiritual dead sea, taking what remains of your flock with you and betraying them yet again, or you can listen to that flock. They want you to lead them in the right direction. And that right direction is you reconnecting your church back to its roots of pre-Nicene Christianity. And again, the heavy lifting has already been done for you. The Bible and the complete pre-Nicene liturgical guide with rites and sacraments true to form are available. You'll also find a helping hand from the leaders at prenicene.org who are available to assist you with any questions and provide guidance for the reconnect. And the full power of First Bible Network will also be there for you with videos, podcasts, interviews, and radio coverage. FBN has a team dedicated to promoting your new, old, pre-Nicene church. And for an example of a church that has already been established using this pre-Nicene model and Bible, visit marcionitechurch.org. There's only one stipulation for being approved by the pre-Nicene Christian Ecclesia, but it's an important one. The only Bible used must be the pre-Nicene Christian Bible. The days of stapling an extra religion to the front of your Bible are over. Now, will it make a difference in God's eyes if you finally do the right thing at this very late hour? Well, I can't answer that. All I can ask is that God's Holy Spirit find and guide you in making this important decision. And if you're a parishioner that would like to encourage a pastor to reconnect, just share the link to this episode and remind him of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1-2. through 2. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. 
in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Unquote. Let's wrap up with the original Lord's Prayer. Father, let your Holy Spirit come upon us, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, as in heaven, so on earth. Give us day by day our bread for the coming day, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us, and lead us not into temptation. Amen. I'm Darren Kalama, and we'll see you next time on Pre-Nicene Perspective. You've been listening to Pre-Nicene Perspective. To learn more about the First Bible and the First Christians, visit theveryfirstbible.org.